Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a server in Minecraft 1.16.4. Minecraft 1.16.4 came out about 45 minutes ago and we are here ready making you a video on how to get your server set up in it. First and foremost though, I do want to mention that this is not a 24 hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. On top of that, it's only meant for your friends, your family, people that you can trust. It's not meant to be for everybody and anybody because it's hosted on your own computer and on your own internet. And anyone with this will have your IP address and that means they can figure out where you live, they can DDoS you, they can do just a lot of bad different things that you don't want people doing. So you should only give this out to people that you can trust when you're making this server. On top of that, it is running on your own computer's hardware and you're going to need a decent computer in order to make sure that you can actually run this server and run it reliably and all that stuff. But what if you don't have any of those things or what if you just don't have one of those things, right? What if you want a 24-hour server? What if you want a server more than just your, for more than just your friends and family? Or what if you want a server that's not hosted on your own computer, that's hosted somewhere else that you don't have to worry about hosting it on your own computer and having a good computer yourself? For example, you can join any Minecraft server right now and play it, but you don't think you'll have a good enough computer to be able to run a server and play on the server at the same time. Well, if you want that, or if you just want the easiest way possible to start a server, check out Apex Minecraft Hosting at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. At Apex, you will find an incredible, simple way to start a Minecraft server where you literally just click a few buttons, enter some information, and boom, your server is set up and running in Minecraft 1.16.4 or any version of Minecraft that you want. It also has full mod pack support with over 130 mod packs, one click setup at Apex, and you can do things like add plugins to your server, add mods to your server, all that stuff can be done quickly and easily with Apex. On top of that, you have 24 hours, 7 day a week support that is absolutely incredible. We actually love it and trust Apex so much that we have our own server, played our breakdowncraft.com on them. So if you want to start your very own Minecraft server, Apex Minecraft hosting is the easiest, simplest way to do it. And you don't have to worry about being on here on computer because Apex hosts it. It's on their hardware, not on your hardware. So if you can join any other Minecraft server, you can join your server on Apex Minecraft hosting. On top of that, they take care of things like DDoS protection. You don't have to worry about security, all that stuff. Apex takes care of all of it. Plus, again, that amazing support that you can reach out to at any time. So, go check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your own Minecraft server up and running quickly and easily. But, what if you don't want to do that? What if you want a server hosted on your own computer? Well, if that's the case, guess what? We're going to be showing you how to host a server on your own computer right now. And uh, your friends will be able to join this, all this once we're all said and done. But, again, it is going to take a decent computer and you are going to have to worry about things like, you know, making sure only your friends and family get it because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. But nevertheless, to get started, what you want to do is go to the second link down below, and that's going to take you here. This is actually our text tutorial for starting a Minecraft server. That's something that, you know, if we go too fast in this video, you can go through this tutorial right here, and it will walk you through everything. However, the video can sometimes go in depth a little more than some parts of the article and vice versa, so it can be good to go through them both at the same time. However, all you need to do once you're here is go on the download Minecraft button. It's actually going to take us off to where we can download the Minecraft 1.16 jar. So as you can see, download Minecraft underscore server 1.16.4.jar. Just go ahead and click on that there, and in the bottom left, it will go ahead and download the server.jar. You can go ahead and click keep, and it will save it in the bottom left, right like so. Now, if you're on Mozilla Firefox, you need to save it in the center of your screen by just clicking the save button. It's 100% safe to save or keep this file because it is from, I mean, it's from Minecraft.net. It's Mojang's official website for Minecraft. So it, we're pretty safe there. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And here on our desktop, we do have this server.jar file. Now, if this isn't already desktop, this is going to be in your downloads folder. To find that, click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen, but it's probably in the bottom left of your screen. So click that little Windows icon on the top or bottom left of your screen. Then go ahead and click on that and type in downloads. Then you want to go ahead and go to this download file folder here and in here you will find a server.jar. You can drag this to your desktop just for ease of use. Once the server.jar is on your desktop, we want to go ahead and right click on your desktop, create a new folder. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I naming it that? Because that is our own incredible Minecraft server. We have the best survival and skyblock server out there. You will absolutely love it. So come play with this. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. If you want amazing survival, amazing skyblock, you'll love it. I won't do the big pitch here, but you'll love it. So come join that server. Played our breakdowncraft.com. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and once you've got your profile or folder created, excuse me, once you've got your folder created there, just drag and drop the server.jar into that folder. Now we want to go ahead and double click on this, and here we go. We have this set up. Now, you may not have .jar at the end, and if you don't, that's okay. Let's go ahead and make it appear though, just to make things easier. To do that, click on view here. And then you want to come over here and click on the file name extensions. So as you can see, mine now says server. If you click on view and click on file name extensions to make a little checkbox appear there, it will go ahead and add in the .jar. You may need to right click and refresh to get that to work. 
and oh, it didn't actually click it. There we go. We click on file name extensions and now they will come back. So click on view, file name extensions, make sure that little checkbox is there and this will be called server.jar. That's not super important unless you want to add more RAM to your server. And if you want to see how to do that, there is a link in the description down below on how to add more RAM to your server. But to get your server started up in the simplest way possible, just go ahead and double click on this server.jar. Now for some of you, it should and it will go ahead and work. But for some of you, it won't, right? For some of you, this just won't work at all, right? You'll have the ulay.txt and the server.properties appear and awesome. But but for some of you, that's not going to work. It's not going to appear the ULA.txt and the server.properties. What do you do in that case? Well, in that case, you need to go download Java. So as you can see, this is how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. This is linked in the description down below. And once you're here, you can go through this entire three-step process. It's super simple. I've also got a video on it on getting the Java set up and running for Minecraft servers. This is the best version for Minecraft servers out there. After you've done that, you can then run the jar fix if you're still having issues opening up this file here. If you're still double-clicking on it and it's not working, or if you don't have this little Java logo here, you can need to go ahead and run the jar fix to get that fixed. Guess what? Also, linked in the description down below and also a very quick and simple three-step process. Once the jar fix has been run though, you'll finally be able to double click on server.jar, get the ua.txt and server.properties file. Now once you've gotten these files created, you actually need to double click on the ua.txt and it will open up in Notepad. If it doesn't open up in Notepad, go ahead and select Notepad, but it should open up in Notepad. Then you want to go ahead and go here. And if you agree to the Minecraft EULA, which we do for this server, we can do EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then we can go file, save, and now we can close out of the EULA.txt. Now we can double click on the server.jar again, and this time our server will actually start up. We'll know this because the GUI is actually going to open up and show that the server is up and running, right? On top of that, it's doing things like generating a world folder, which is, well, our Minecraft world, and boom, there we go. We have this, you know, Minecraft GUI, server GUI running, showing that the server is up, and then eventually we'll see over here that it is done and that it is actually running the server. So it still needs to do things like generate the world and stuff like that, which it is doing right now. Now, if you do get this pop up right like so, which does say, you know, Windows Defender Firewall blocks and features, you want to make sure that you allow that to both private and public networks right like so. If you don't have this pop-up, that's okay. Not everyone will. But if you do have a Windows Defender Firewall pop-up, you want to make sure private networks and public networks are both selected because that is what we want. And then click Allow Access. So now if we look in the background here, we do have Done right back there, meaning the server is now started. And at this point, you can actually test your server. See if you can join it. Now, your friends, no one else can join it but you at this point, but let's go ahead and test that. So first thing we need to do to do that is click on the little Windows icon again, the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. Get that little Windows icon on the top or bottom left of your screen, and then go ahead and type in CMD. You then have this command prompt here. Click on that, and then in command prompt, you want to type IPCONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. It'll open up a bunch of information, but we only need two things from this. I am also going to open up Notepad, though, and copy these down. You could write them down, whatever's easier for you, but you you do need to make note of these numbers for later. So for me, right here, we've got our IPv4 address. So let's go ahead and get that IPv4 address. So for our IPv4 address, it's 192.168.1.123. Exactly like that. That's our IPv4 address there. Now we also need our default gateway, right like so. So we default gateway. Now you may have two default gateways. One that looks like this, like a bunch of numbers and letters and all that stuff with like multiple semicolons and everything. You might have that. And then you're probably going to have one under that that's just numbers. We want the one that's just numbers, right? This might be two lines, but it might say default gateway. And then the next line be blank, but there be a number over here. That's the number that we want. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1, right like so. And that's all we need. We can now close out a command prompt. So to test join our server, we want to make sure the server is up right here, right like this. And then you want to go ahead and open up Minecraft. So I'm going to go ahead, get to the Minecraft main menu. And then once we're there in 1.16.4, we'll test this server, make sure we can join it. Then I'll show you how to allow your friends to join your server. All right, so as you can see here, we now have Minecraft open. We've also got our server up and running, and we've got our IPs right here. So what we need to do is go ahead and click on multiplayer, and then click on direct connection here. And then we want to go ahead and copy our IPv4 address, right like so, and paste it into the server address there. Then click join server. Now, you should join right on into your server. However, you are the only person that can join your server this way. I would honestly recommend always joining your server this way because it's going to give you the best connection and it means you don't have to worry about, you know, anything with your ISP. Sometimes ISPs won't collect, like, allow you to connect via your public IP. We're going to try that later on just in case, but you can only join via your IPv4 address there, but it's a good way to test your server like we just have. And with that, now we can see our server is up and running. Cool. We can see that we joined in over here on the right-hand side. But if we tried to join, like, give it to our friends, it's not going to work. Our friends need our public IP, but before before they can join at all, we need to port forward for a Minecraft server. So I'm going to go ahead and close out a Minecraft. 
I'm also going to go ahead and stop our server, right like so. That's going to close out of it, just typing STOP, just typing stop in that little text box and hitting enter is going to close your server. And then I also have uh, these files that I've created because I just updated our server. Drag those into the backups file. For those of you that are working on servers, always keep backups of everything. For example, we just updated playedoutbreakdowncraft.com to 116.4 and that little jump cut. And that was the proof of that. But nonetheless, and now that we have this here, we can go ahead and click on server.properties. Now, for me, that's going to open in Notepad. You may need to select it to open in Notepad. But now what we want to do is go ahead and scroll down until we find server-ip equals right like so. Then we want to go ahead and copy our IPv4 address and paste that right next to server-ip equals in our server.properties file. Then go ahead and do file, save, right like so, and boom, you are done. You have now allowed the server to know where it's hosted. It's kind of what you just did there. Now we can go ahead and close out of the play.breakdowncraft.com profile or your main server profile there. And we want to go ahead and go to our browser. Now we want to open up a brand new tab. And in this brand new tab here, we want to take the default gateway that we got earlier and paste it right up here where you would normally type, you know, youtube.com, the breakdown of XYZ, breakdowncraft.com, all that stuff, where you would normally type a website, go ahead and enter in that uh, default gateway that you found earlier. When you hit enter, it's going to open up a page that looks somewhat similar, but most likely completely different to what you see on your screen right now. But that's okay. We're going to walk you through the entire process. Now, there is one thing that probably will be similar. There will probably be some sort of login box right like this, right? Now, yours may pop in from the top, maybe in the center of your screen, may pop in from the bottom of your screen, maybe over here, doesn't matter, but there will be some sort of a login box. Now, what do you enter in here? Well, you're going to enter in your router's username and password. A lot of people don't know this, so we have this tutorial here, which you can find in the description down below that will show you exactly how to find your router's password in a quick and easy by method system. Basically, you try method one, try method two, three, four, five, etc., until you finally have found your router's password. However, most people find it by method three. Once you've found that, you can come back over to your router here and you want to go ahead and log in to your router right like so. Then, once you sign into your router, you're going to be taken to a page that, again, most likely looks completely different from what you see on your screen right now. Mine is a Linksys router. You may have a Netgear or something different. And guess what? That's okay for two reasons. Reason number one is we have another in-depth tutorial that walks you through right here. This walks you through the entire process of port forwarding on any router out there, right? No matter what router it is, this walks you through the entire process of port forwarding on it. And even if your specific router isn't mentioned here, which by the way, I think there's over 10 routers mentioned in this video. But if your specific router isn't mentioned in that video, then still watch it because most routers come from similar companies and the things in the routers are going to be identified as the same thing. So you might listen to it and find out five different names that port forwarding could be. And guess what? It's probably going to be one of those five different things because that's kind of it, right? There's only so many different names for the same thing, which in this case is port forwarding. So watch this video here linked in the description down below. And then finally, we can come back to our router. And what we want to do is go ahead and port forward. Now, for me, it's going to be in security. For you, it may be in advanced. It may be in advanced, advanced. It may be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It really all depends. Whatever kind of router you have is going to depend on where it's at. But for me, it is in security. And then it is in apps and gaming. And then for me, it is in single port forwarding. Again, for you, it may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in NAT triggering. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in the advanced or admin tab. It could be in the advanced, advanced tab. And I think that's where it is on Netgear routers. It could also just be in a single port forwarding tab. Eventually, though, you'll find something that looks similar to this with like a kind of a list of different things here and options under it. Now, mine, I have to click add a new single port forward. For you, it may just be like a big list, right? Like so. And if that's the case, just enter it into the first one. Either way is going to be perfectly fine. But for me, I have to click add a new single port forward. Now, for application name or your ID, you want to type in Minecraft. For external port, internal port for anything with the word port p-o-r-t if it says the word port at all put in 25565 so external port there's the word port 25565 internal port hey there's that word port again we're gonna go ahead and enter in 25565 for our protocol we want to select tcp slash udp udp slash tcp or both if for whatever reason you can't select both at the same time by clicking on both or you know tcp slash udp if you can't do that then do this twice exactly the same except once for tcp and then once for udp after that, we can go ahead and move on to where it says device IP. Now, for me, it says device IP. For you, it may be a big drop-down box of all of the things connected to your internet. If that's the case, just select the computer that you're starting your Minecraft server on. For me, though, and if you have to enter in an IP like I do, you're going to enter in your IPv4 address here. So for me, that's 192.168.1.123. 
Finally, we can go ahead and save this, click apply, we are done. However, some people do need an external or public IP for their port forward. If that's the case, that's okay, because everyone watching this video, if you want your friends to be able to join, need your public IP. So if you go down to the description down below, it'll take you here, which is our website where you can see your IP address is and then the IP address listed. Now, for us, obviously, you can only see the last number, which in this case is 100, because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. You can also see the stuff you can get here. Again, blacked out for you, but you can get your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates all from your IP address here. Anyone who has this has this information, so that's why it's so important that you be very, very careful whenever you're, you know, giving this out to anybody and everybody. It's not meant for that. It's just meant your friends and family and people you trust. If you want a public server, get an Apex server. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead, come back to our port forward, enter it in here if we need it, click apply, click OK. And now if we minimize our browser, we can go ahead and start our server on up. To do that, just double click on the server.jar file. That's going to start our server up right like so. There we go. Our server is now starting. As you can see, it's up here at the top. Click on it. Here it is. It is getting everything set up. I'm also going to go ahead and open up Minecraft again. I will see you on the Minecraft main menu. So here we are. We are now on the Minecraft main menu where we can go ahead and click on multiplayer. We are also going to click direct connect again, but this time we're going to paste in that public IP address there right like so. Again, you can only see 100. The rest of this is blacked out, but that's just so you can see that it's the same number we had earlier. Now, if we click join server over here on the right hand side, you will go ahead and see us join right on in. There it is. Next games joining in right like so. Now, once we're in game here, we can see we're in the exact same spot, all of that stuff. But if you want to do commands, like let's say you wanted to go ahead and change your game mode to creative, you can't do that. It's not going to let you do it. If I can type correctly, it's not going to let you do it. That's because you need to op yourself. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. Come over here to your server console. That's what this is. And then type op and then your username. So op nix games in my case, but it would be op and then whatever your username is. Now we can do slash game mode creative without problem and fly around and all that stuff. Only give op out to the people that you want to have op. You probably wouldn't want everyone on your server to have that but it is good to know if you do want to do that. Now, what if you can't join via your public IP address? Well, that's not the end of the world. As I mentioned earlier, you can join via your local IP address. The only people that have to join via your public IP address is your friends. So as long as your friends can join off your public IP, then you're fine. You don't have to. You can play with them using your local IP address without any harm. However, if your friends can't join off of your public IP address, then it's most likely an issue with your firewall or antivirus, either on your router or on your computer. So first and foremost, make sure there's not a firewall on your router causing your port forward not to happen, right? Not to allow people through the port that you opened. Also check your port forward, double check it with earlier in the video, make sure it is correct. And then if all that looks good on your router, then it's time to look at your computer. It could be Windows Defender, and it most likely is if you have issues, or it could be an antivirus. So first off, turn off your antivirus and then see if your friends can join. If they can, add an exception to your antivirus for your Minecraft server. Otherwise, we have a tutorial linked in the description down below, which is right here. This is how to allow Java through your firewall for Minecraft servers. As you can see, it's helped over 9,000 people already, and it shows you how to enable Java in order to allow people to join your server. That is linked in the description down below, so if you do have any issues at this stage, that's most likely going to help you, if nothing else has. But thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single day of the week. We make awesome Minecraft content, and come play with us on the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, Play.Breakdown. Craft.com. We have so much new stuff in the pipeline. It is going to be absolutely incredible. We just restarted 73 players online, but normally over 150, 200 players every single day. We've got Grief Protected Survival, Custom Skyblock. It is truly incredible. Medieval Survival has 30 custom quests, native 1.16.4 support, and it's just truly amazing. And then Skyblock is 100% custom with so much more stuff and a huge update on the way. So come play with us. Play.Breakdowncraft.com is the IP. I cannot wait to see you online. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I am out. Peace.